Very good morning and welcome to a Weekend Express. My name is Trix Ingado. This morning we're going to, well, usually we focus on social issues and the one we have chosen for you this morning has to do with fertility. This is an issue that is shrouded often uh, by secrecy and of course this is owing to stigma from society. So a lot of people suffer in silence. They don't even try to find out if it's a couple, if this is a problem with the man or the woman. And there's just so much that uh, needs to be done and you need to note that fertility many of these orders can be treated so we have experts here in studio they're going to help us dig into it and on one hand we have counseling psychologist dr jane kimani she is a phd um, um, holder in this field and she's going to dig deeper into the reason why people shy away from getting treatment because this is of course and of course it, the, the toll it take what it takes on them when they're trying to have a baby can't seem to do it but of course at the same time are avoiding medical intervention owing to what society is putting them through or the potential of what society could put them through on the other hand we shall have a specialist in urologist that shall be joining us in a few moments but we won't introduce him until he has joined us uh, here on set but so without much further ado let's get into it and just um, get into the psychological bits of this problem of infertility thank you so much dr jen kimani for joining us this morning yeah now um it goes without saying that people nobody wants to be known as the infertile one yeah. i mean there's so many movies that have been made about the nigeria ones about you know people trying to have a baby and yes. praying about it yes. and you know the mother-in-laws the in-laws and in the african society context it's no laughing matter it's yeah. really really serious yeah yeah so could you just start off with um uh explaining to us why in the african context infertility might be a bigger problem than, than let's say in the west or even in the east why? yeah well uh, we have some societal expectations eh? mm -hmm. and i think each one of us after a girl perhaps has gotten married after one year a year and a half you're expecting to see the baby bump and you're very sure that within no time you'll be having perhaps like a baby, a baby shower. And so that is societal. And a lot of times, a lot of things that happen to us, especially as Africans, is because there is a norm we are expecting our show shows the mother-in-law is expecting the daughter, the daughter-in-law to bring a child. And so when it doesn't happen, it is a big blow. When it doesn't happen and time has elapsed, a year has gone, two years down the line, three years down the line, now the stigmatization begins. When they realize actually the wedding was, a, or perhaps the come we stay is a year down the line, yeah. nothing has happened, mm -hmm. the stigmatization is serious. Yeah. However, there's a dimension and a level of stigmatization also in the West. Mm -hmm. Not as much. In the African... But the, in, the, in the black African society, the African-American society, mm -hmm. there's a bit of that expectation. Mm. In the white society, it gets lower. It gets pretty lower because there are many that will marry mm -hmm. and decide actually they don't want a child. Right. But in our African setup, oh my God, we need this baby. And we need it like yesterday. Yeah, so that's the expectation that drives the pain. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, talk about uh, the fact that... Um, people don't want to deal with it they somehow just shy away from the issue you know and of course you've mentioned the psychological bit and and the fact that society is you know contributing to it so i'd rather just hide with my problem let people talk about me if it's my husband that might be having the problem i'm not going to expose him i'll right. even bear the brunt yes. of the stigma speak to us about what that how that contributes to me being quiet about what we're going through Number one, denial. Uh -huh. Number one, denial. Mm -hmm. A lot of couples who discover perhaps a year is down the line, two years unprotected, unprotected intimacy, and there is no conception, yeah. have seen perhaps, or have not yet even begun to see a doctor. A year is down, two years down the line. Mm -hmm. The first thing they get into is denial. Mm -hmm. Just like any other condition. Right. Nobody wants to accept that I'm infertile. Yeah. Nobody wants to accept that I cannot bring forth a child, yeah. whether the man or the woman. 
and it takes a stage where now they decide let's go see a doctor mm -hmm. let's go check on what the problem could be that's when at times they discover the problem could have been the man mm -hmm. and no man will accept it easily that clearly have this problem yeah so the first reason why people will shun off is denial mm -hmm. you first fight the, the 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 part of denial number two you think time will heal it <laughs> yes does it though at times uh, ninety percent no. Yeah. If there is no intervention, mm -hmm. and many people get to a point where they say, at least with time, the baby will come. Mm -hmm. And there is this thing on, oh, it's okay, the baby will come. Yeah. And you know, tell the parents, it's okay, the baby will come. But you know, with more prodding, actually, what brings the challenge is the prodding from the society. Okay. If they're to remain in their own island, wait for the time to come or their own interventions or whatever other ways it could have been okay yeah but you realize that there are ladies who were there during your wedding some of them are your classmates mm -hmm. they have babies your younger the, sisters are your younger sisters and having babies yes and yeah. you're going for the same charmers with some of them <laughs> and they tag along they're tagged along by their babies mm -hmm. and you're alone right. and it speaks loud you know at times stigma is not even verbal because it's yes the verbal stigma yeah at times, it is a conception mm. that you're looking at me like this because I don't have a baby. Mm -hmm. And you discover we, we are in a space where you cannot tell the world, my husband has got this problem. Right. It's my husband who is to blame. You cannot. So you swallow it all in. And in the process, a lot of people have really damaged their quality of life. Because mm. they don't know who we like confiding. Who can I trust to tell that the doctor told me that I'm not in a position to carry a baby. Yes. You know, for most of us, all girls, while we were growing, we used to have those babies, the dolls and everything. Yeah. And we gave dream, them yeah. names. Mm -hmm. And it was an expression of some maternal instinct in us. So when that maternal instinct is actually never met. Mm. It is like a death on the inside uh -huh. unless you've got proper support system. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So speak, speaking about denial, there's a very important element to this. While some might be denying an actual physical problem that can be treated, we'll find out from the doctor. But late, but but I like us to go into the element of denial where we as, we assign spirituality yeah. to the problem. Yeah. And this is very common yeah. in our African context. Speak to us about how that could be a problem. Not that religion is a bad thing, but it could be a problem if you just looking to religion as the cause and solution yeah. to infertility. Actually, I'll take it a bit broader. Yeah. Uh, people look at it from religion from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Some will think it's witchcraft. Yes. And they'll not look for help because quote-unquote, they know who bewitched them. Mm -hmm. And so now it's a counter-warfare mm. of whoever bewitched me and whatever they wanted and now me looking for somebody who can also counter, counter. that. <laughs> and with time, we are, we, are, we are wasting so much time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in our culture still believe if you don't get a baby, they were swallowed by your evil auntie. Mm. Your evil auntie killed them. <laughs> right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Before they were even conceived, something mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. There is just the element that we do not want actually to... Con, co, you know, consent with the situation and say this is it. Mm. So most of us go religious. Mm. And religion, the, po the positive perspective is not bad. Mm -hmm. There are those who will go for prayer. Yes. There are those who will go and seek for the counsel of God mm -hmm. from their different uh, religious facilities right. based on wherever they worship. Mm -hmm. And again, it has a very big positive when you go to the right place, it has its own positive connotation. Yeah. Because and even the element of support. Just yes, because yeah. for a start, you get support. Yes. Number two, you get somebody else who knows and can hold a secret with you mm -hmm. and can at least show you a direction. Whether they tell you you are going to pray, mm -hmm. whether they tell you you are going to, to fast or seek divine intervention, mm -hmm. that on its own is comfort. Yes. And I believe... As much as these people will say, up to that place now, I'm waiting on God to perform the miracle. Mm -hmm. Now, I agree he's a miracle performer. Mm -hmm. But I, I also think the person consulted should also 
involve a counselor yes. who also has the same basis of faith, mm -hmm. who can advise them that as much as you are waiting for God to open up your womb, and mm -hmm. we know he can, yes. he can also use a doctor. Right. He can also use medical intervention because mm -hmm. it's not a sin. Mm -hmm. However, there is the extreme where some people believe it's a sin if I go to the hospital. Or I'm denying my faith. I'm yeah. denying my faith. Yeah. I'm not being true to God. Yes. I've not waited long enough. Mm. I've not prayed hard enough. Mm. And unfortunately, some of the people will be telling you you've not prayed hard enough, you've not waited long enough, yeah. are people who are carrying their own babies. They don't understand your pain. Yes. And again, I say God, and I tell people this, God is able to lead you to the right medical caregiver. Mm, mm, mm. God is able to lead you to the right person who is able to give you the right medi me whatever, mm -hmm. advice, yeah. or, you know, medical, let, let's just put it as a medical caregiver. Yeah. Uh, and he's okay, able to do the miracle, he does it in many ways. But we need to understand it's not a sin. If you and the pastor agree, you'll also consult a doctor right. and pray through the system. Right. As you're going through the medication, as you're going through to understand the problem, mm -hmm. you're also in prayer. Mm -hmm. However, I always put a, a, a caution, don't go to the witches. Yeah, because those are also in some context uh, called or referred to or even trusted with the same level of trust as medical doctor. They are witch doctors. But the, those who put their trust in them have put their trust in them in a big way. I've had yeah. cases yeah. of somebody who told me, you know, I can't see a doctor because I was given this. Mm. And I asked, what, what will is these leaves yeah. do? Yeah. Leaves and a few other concussions, what will they do? Mm -hmm. They'll keep away the evil that is keeping me from conceiving. But you have so there are conceived. things that actually go beyond yeah. logic. Yeah. Yes, they may give you the sense of, okay, peace. And most of the people who are taken that direction mm. are taken by elder people. They don't, they don't seek it themselves. Mm. Either by parents or by a relative much older who believes us the, the direction to go. But I think today we've come to enlighten the people. Right. Yes. Absolutely. I like, you know, the same Bible that we've referred to and it, when it comes to the religious aspect of it says, hope deferred makes the heart, the heart sick. sick. You know, yes. speak to us about that element as one waits and hopes and just, you know, and nothing is forthcoming. Yes. What do, does that do psychologically? And even in the context of fertility, stress can be a problem, right? Of course. Yeah. Talk to us about okay, that. Okay, number one, stress. Mm -hmm. It starts as anxiety. Mm. Basic anxiety. Nothing is happening. You wait for the month. Another month comes in. And so anxiety begins to pile up. Yeah. And when it piles up, it leads you to stress. You're very stressed. You're anxious. You're stressed. Number one, it even imbalances the hormones. Mm -hmm. And I tell people who are going through treatment... Mm. The, st the state of your mind is so important right. to conception. Because mm. for your hormones to balance well, the state of your mind has to be at rest and at peace. Mm. So you say, yes, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Totally agree with you. When somebody discovers I've waited, not yet gotten this baby, mm -hmm. a month has come, I prayed perhaps, or I saw whoever I went to see, to this song, nothing song has mama. happened, mm -hmm. they begin to sink into a slow stress and into a slow depression. Uh -huh. A lot of people are sinking into depression. Now, the depression has a counter effect. Okay. It affects, it affects the quality of marriage, life in marriage. Mm. There's a counter, it's actually a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. It will affect your job, your career, your business, because you can't give it your all. You are now not well. Mm -hmm. You're not only expecting to conceive, but actually having a problem with mental wellness now. Mm. And it can get to extreme maniac stage. Oh, no. Yes, I've met women who have gotten to maniac stage, and you find them carrying rag dolls and everything and they are calling them babies and they're giving them names yeah and people will think it's funny people will think they're being extreme they are not being extreme they are sick 
Yeah. They need attention. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you cannot deliver at your uh, place of work. So there is a social, now the economic, the mm -hmm. economic steps. Impact, in. yeah. Mm -hmm. The economic impact because most people end up not able to work. Another thing when you are heavy in stress, your hopes have been deferred, you get to a state called the low esteem, mm. self-esteem. Mm. You not only are feeling depressive, you're also your self-esteem is so low right. that you're not able to intermingle with the people you used to intermingle with before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You look at them and you think every one of them is blessed. I am not blessed. Right. God answers all their prayers, does Except not answer mine. mine. Mm -hmm. And so there's a problem again between you and God. Right. A perceived problem. Mm. That God does not love me. If he loved me, he'd have given me a child. Yeah. And that's why I talk a lot, even to the pastors, mm -hmm. of who I am, mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that when you are walking through the path with these people, right. we need to make it very easy for them by opening their eyes to logic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, let, you've mentioned something that has actually uh, piqued my, my, my interest because you said when some of these women get to the manic state, you know, they start even you know, compensating with the ragdolls and what have you, and maybe showering excessive love on people that they would perceive as, you know, people they're nurturing. Could you speak to us about adoption? If, if the worst case, uh, in the worst case scenario, there's always the option of adoption mm. from the family, no. from an orphanage, someone who actually need, needs mm. all the love that yes. you are busting with. Why isn't this a very popular option? And why isn't it easy for one to just, you know, say, okay, I can't have one. Let me just bring this one into my family. Yeah, I will rope in our, our husbands into yeah. the picture, the mm. husbands into the picture. Mm -hmm. Before a man accepts, number one, that he's infertile, mm. some, I don't say all, because they are very good men yeah. who have walked with their wives, they've journeyed, they've walked the ups and the downs, mm -hmm. and they've said till death. But there are some who will try outside. Okay. Whether, and, and some are even advised by their mm -hmm. families. Yeah. Perhaps it is this lineage. Perhaps it's this family. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this woman... <laughs> Yeah. Even their great great auntie mm -hmm. was not Had able to say. Mm -hmm. And you know at times, yes, it could be genetical. And so at times mm. there is no agreement. Because when it comes to adoption, there has to be an agreement between the two of you that tears have reached a point of the end. Yeah. And mm. I feel the only option I have mm. that's for a very healthy minded person. Yes. And a person who has reached a logical conclusion mm -hmm. that as much as I may wait the next two, three, four, five years, mm -hmm. this report I got from Dr. One, yes. Dr. B, Dr. Yes. C, Dr. D mm -hmm. have all given me this report. Right. And so I'd rather be logical, realistic, mm -hmm. and we both sit, go for counseling. Yeah. Go for counseling, the two of you. Because yes, as a woman, you may be bubbling with love. Mm -hmm. But is your husband bubbling the same love? Are you both at a state where you have accepted? You're only 35. Yeah. And you're ready to adopt. Mm -hmm. Adoption is a very noble idea. It is. But adoption only kicks in when the two of you get to the dead end. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, while doing the research, I discovered something. Mm -hmm. Some spouses may opt to get another wife. Aha. Uh -huh. We are talking of African culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's permissible. A side chick, yeah. another wife, mm. and they feel like, let me try out with this one, perhaps we'll get a child. Mm. We have a third set that moves out to women who already had children. Okay. Yes, I know of quite a number. In, in our research, mm. we came across all that. Mm. They opt to go and get and marry and get married to or marry a woman who has mm. children. So they see it as proof that this one actually can have children, or how, how does that happen? What's the as much, Yes, yeah. as much as they may know yeah. that they may not be able to have the child, mm. perhaps, you know, there's always the element of hope. Number one, there's a proof that mm -hmm. this one is, uh, is, a, is, is, a, is a good ground. Mm. Number two, mm. most of them will actually, because they love the woman, yes. they will adopt those children uh -huh. and I'll show off to the society, these are I mine. am uh, not barren, these are my children. <laughs>
from now going on yeah. wherever i go yeah. and i know like let's talk of cultures where mm. they name after their parents yeah they give some of them name. change the names uh-huh. and name after their family lineage wow so that wherever they go there is no doubt <laughs> he has children yes. now leaving the lady alone mm. Assuming the lady is alone and wants to adopt, she needs first to go through the healing. Yeah. Not that as a single parent, now you cannot adopt. Yes, you can. Mm. As married couples, yes, they are adopting because they are together, they are tight. Yes. But in the few cases where the man decides, I'm leaving you, I want to go get a lady who can prove that she can get children, mm. such children. Mm. And I've known of cases where they both went separate ways. The lady went to separate ways and actually she gave birth to twins wow yes so it was like you know i was okay mm. all throughout i was okay yeah. but is that the way that it's supposed no, to go no it shouldn't no that's yeah. not the way it's so that means to, to when you say that it means that people are unable to have these conversations and face facts yes. um, and i do hear that many women are quick to go to hospital and yes. get checked but then dragging the husband then is a whole entire other issue speak to us about that okay uh, we are brought up uh, in a society where men mm. should not be exposed to some of this yeah we should protect the ego we should protect their ego and i always agree mm. as a good wife protect the ego mm -hmm. cover him up however and you know we've grown up with that yeah but also the men feel like it's your responsibility and I don't say all of them, mm. a percentage because people are getting very well enlightened. Yeah. There's a percentage that still feels like mm -hmm. you want to try out your taking care of not getting children. Yeah. That's up to the woman. Mm. You know, uh, we had a debate somewhere right. where a man was insisting that he didn't want more children. Mm. He already has four and the woman is doing nothing about it. And so I asked him, would you do something about it? Mm. You know, science has brought a lot of solutions. Yeah. And he told me, no, that's the work of a woman. No. Yes. Wow. Whatever contraceptives you're going to use, that's the work of a woman. Mm -hmm. And yes, it has been the work of a woman, but I hope that they would get to a level of a conversation mm -hmm. where the two of them would now sit down and say, this is not working for yeah, me. Yeah. Can we try this? Mm -hmm. That communication is the first thing that dies off. Right. When a child is not forthcoming mm. because there's a blame game. Yeah. It could be you, it could be you. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where both of you are happy, you've accepted the situation, you should actually go see a doctor together. True. See a, see a doctor, get the situation checked out, mm. be patient in the process, mm -hmm. get advice from one. And yes, mm. that is happening in this generation. But I would only give it like 20% okay. of men will willingly go forth and say, I'm not sure if I'm healthy enough. I need Sorry. to go expose myself to another man right. to determine whether I'm healthy enough. Look at that ego. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. when it comes to bigger issues, egos have to die. Absolutely. And of course, we shall be digging deeper into matters um, fertility when we come back from this break. Remember that this is not just a matter that affects women, also men, but then seeking help, both psychological help and medical help is very critical. So we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with Dr. Jen Kimani with more on this matter of fertility.